This is Dr. Gina Loudon filling in today for my good friend Brian Fisher. Well, he has a small procedure done, some screws uh, put back, not in his head, don't even start with me, uh, in his knee, I believe it is, from his motor scooter accident going back a little while, and we are wishing him our best. We are saying prayers for him, and uh, I'm sure he will be back with you right away. In the meantime, I am honored to be with you. I've gotten to fill in for Brian before, and uh, you are one of my favorite audiences. I'm not going to lie. I really love being with you, and I, I beg for these opportunities. I kind of harass Brian and Jeff, like, you need any time off, Brian? Can I come in for you? Because I like to be with you, and I like your calls at 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. We are discuss discussing Sergeant Andrew Tamarisi held as we speak in a Mexican prison. As I sit right now, I'm about one hour from him at the most, where I sit. I'm that close to him here in the studio. And uh, I, I have researched this case nonstop, really for about the last week. We're going to have his mother coming up here on the show. I organized a protest against this situation yesterday after the hearings came back with really nothing to tell us. I organized a protest and I said, uh, something needs to be done. Hello, U.S. government. Hello, you people out there, you Republicans and Democrats, you always say you want to be bipartisan. You want to be statesmanly. Have you ever had a better opportunity than this to be a hero? Bring our Marine home. Free our Marine is the hashtag we're using on Facebook and Twitter to try and get him home. Free our Marine. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Dr. Gina Loudon. You can also go to my Facebook page, and that is either Gina Gentry Loudon or Dr. Gina. There are two of them. And I would love to have you there. And you can weigh in on this situation and on this show, or you can give us a call, 888-589-8840. And I guess I better stop saying that because it looks like our phone lines are filling up. I am going to go first to Terry. Terry, you are a Marine. Welcome to the show and thank you for your service, Terry. Thank you, Dr. Gina. It's good to hear from you and I appreciate your program. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, my thought is the, the liberal perception on most liberals in office is if it's not politically advantageous or expedient for them as they perceive it, uh, they're not concerned. It's like what Ms. Hillary said about Benghazi. At this point, what does it matter? Well, if it was her child, it would matter, you see, but they don't they don't put themselves in people's place. And, oh, Terry, and, uh, you got me right there. You almost made me tear up on this show right here, right now. When you have the respect to call her Miss Hillary, when I, you just you, I, I could just I miss the South. I'm sorry. I used to broadcast from the South and I miss the South. And you just almost made me tear up right there. But you know what? You're exactly right. But this is the thing I don't understand, Terry. And maybe you can explain this to me. You say when it's not politically expedient, they don't do it. Why isn't this the perfect hero issue? Why isn't this politically expedient? I, I'm honestly asking you a question. I'm not being sarcastic. I don't get it. Right. I don't get it either. I, you know, I'm a preacher. It makes me want to cuss. <laughs> Oh, Terry. Well, listen, thank you. Thank you for serving us as a as a preacher and also for your military service. Um, we're going to bring this guy home, Terry. I have I will absolutely assure you right now I am going to stay on this story. You'll be able to read my stuff at WND.com. You can look for it on my page at uh, DrGinaShow.com. And I will be all over this until this guy is home. I feel like God put me here for t such a time as this. Why do I live right on the border? Why did I end up here? Uh, you know, when I had a great thing going in the South, and I loved being in the South. So uh, there's a reason, and uh, I'm going to stay on this. That's, that's the only assurance I can give you right now. Clara calling from Houston, Texas. Clara, you're a Marine as well. Hey, how are you today? I, I'm okay. Is, do I read correctly? You're a Marine as well? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to, I don't know, ask you the question. How many criminals do we have from Mexico here that are constantly being arrested, then released, and then uh, arrested again, and then we have a patriot in Mexico that can't come home? That makes no sense to me. You make such a great point, Clara, and I'll tell you this. Um, yesterday at our rally, we had a, a man who talked about exactly that, who's been part of those, you know, catch them and release them, catch them and release them, and uh, yet they won't let our Marine come home. But where is, uh, not just Obama and, and Secretary Kerry, although they could do it literally with a phone call, but where is the Republican leadership on this? Uh, you know, where's John Boehner on this issue? I haven't heard him weigh in on this. I, I don't understand why there's not such 
outrage over this. And I want to ask you this question, Clara. You know, when you're considering going into the military, for our young millennials now who are making these decisions, what in the world is going to make them want to serve this country when they don't even think that after you've served two tours of duty, this country is going to serve you when you need them? Well, look what happened in Benghazi. Right. And I think that I think that this falls right with the agenda because I really believe that Obama wants to destroy the military in this country because I really believe that he has been promised some kind of big reward by taking the United States military and our beliefs down so that we can have a one world order. That's what I really, I mean, I sat down and thought about it and thought about it. And I said, why would this, why is this happening? It's happening yeah. because the United States is the only country that stands for uh, patriotism, that stands for individuality. And this world wants a one world order. That's what, that's and that's where we the are. reason that we want to, take down the American uh, military. We're, I mean, there's thousands of people, millions of people that look to the United States. I, for one, was born in another country. I'm an adopted citizen. My father brought wow. us here when we were little. Wow. And, you know, this is what everybody's dream. You take mm. the dream away, and, you know, it's easy to have a one-world order. Clara, thank you so much for your service. Thank you for, uh, gosh, coming from a foreign country and then coming here and serving the country. I, I think that's amazing. And uh, I, I think Clara's right. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know beyond a certain point how many more excuses we can come up with other than there's something anti-American going on here. Gary, what say you from Tupelo? Gary, how are you today? What do you say? Hi, Gina. Hi, Gary. Go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, of course. I'm just going to say you haven't really said what, what he's charged with. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing, Gary. Uh, he had guns in his trunk. He had ammo in his trunk. But he also had all of his worldly possessions in the back of his pickup truck because he was moving to San Diego and took a wrong turn. Uh, and uh, and so, so, yes, he did have the guns in the back. But he immediately made the 911 call and said, oh, my gosh, I just took a wrong turn. I ended up, I'm on the Mexican border. Help, I've got guns in my truck. And uh, okay. the 911 operator's like, sorry, I can't help you. And then there's nothing you can do to move out of those lanes of traffic, Gary. You need to know that because I've been there. But like still, I said, I live here. Pardon? But, Gina, you still had to say what, what he's charged with. He's only charged with having the guns. He is not charged with smuggling. He is not he's charged with gun running. He's not even charged with escaping, which is interesting. He did escape. Uh, when he was in the first prison, he did escape into a more safe part of the prison to try to get away from the really hardened criminal drug lords who were beating him and told him he was going to die. His mother told me she laid clutching her Bible for 12 hours on the floor in a fetal position after he called and told her, Mom, I'm not going to make it through the night and don't come investigate because they'll kill you next. Uh, and, yeah. and so uh, he, he escaped to another part of the prison. If they had something on him, they'd be charging him with smuggling. They'd be charging him with escaping. There are a lot of things they could try to charge this guy with, if for no other reason than to start the rumors, Gary, but they didn't. And so yeah. that's why I, I'm, just, I'm just believing this. Really, the process needs to be expedited, and it could be done with a phone call from the president and the secretary of state, and that's why I'm so frustrated. Okay, Gina, Gina. Yeah. You, you have to understand the, the president. You know uh, why don't we go to the Congress? Why why does everybody put everything on the president? Because the why president could do it with a phone call. Trump? And because and because the the Congress is, I mean, you've got Congressman Duncan Hunter all over this. Congressman Daryl Issa is on this. I mean, a, a lot of the Congress really have stood up. It's time for the president to stand up. I mean, he took up the case of Trayvon Martin. Can he not? Does he not feel uh, paternal for this young Marine? All right, Gina, let me tell you this. You're, you're a doctor in mental health. We have all these veterans coming back with post-traumatic syndrome. Right. Why are these 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 uh, veterans not put under a restraining order? Why are they not watched? Why should they be watched? About 90% of the people who uh, go uh, engage in any sort of combat come back with post-traumatic stress disorder. You want all of our veterans to put be put under government surveillance? Is that what you're advocating? I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that most of your bad situations come out of people 
who are mentally unstable. You ought to know that more than anybody. Well, what you ought to know, and I'm going to get to this coming up in the second half of the show, is that about 50% of the population qualifies as mentally disabled. Should that keep them, uh, not mentally disabled, I'm sorry, mentally ill, uh, under the new Diagnostics and Statistics Manual, 5th edition, which is the Bible of the mental health profession, they have broadened what is what it means to be mentally ill to such a degree that, frankly, almost no one wouldn't be under surveillance if that's the, the, the tack we took, when, in fact, only about 4% of violent crimes are ever committed by people with a diagnosed mental disorder. So you're going to, if you do that, if you take that tack and, and label 50% of our population and 90% of our veterans who've seen combat, if you want to label all those people mentally ill and you want to take their guns and have them under government surveillance, you're going to successfully eradicate less than 4% of the violent crime that takes place in this country. Is that really what you want to do? Well, Gina, it ain't what I want to do. It's what the government's already doing. Well, I, so I, I think you're probably I right about that. that. You know, yeah, it is. It's done. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for your call. I appreciate it. Uh, going to John from Purdue, Indiana, on line four. John, welcome to Focal Point. Do I have John? Yeah, I'm not hearing John. Um, Dr. We'll Gina? There you are. I got you. Okay, go ahead, John. Yes, Dr. Gina. I, I, I find it uh, distressing that we're not standing up for, uh, for people anywhere, um, even when we have the capability, uh, we, we wait to be asked, like with the uh, ones that were kidnapped in Nigeria, the girls there by the Boko Haram, and then uh, uh, where those are families of Americans, uh, the, the, the mother with the children in uh, Khartoum. But even even uh, in the past, when we've had military people uh, make wrong turns, like happened in Bosnia, President Clinton sent in uh, Jesse Jackson all the way across the world to help uh, get their release. Yeah. And, uh, Jesse John, right here. I hear you. I'm so sorry. You can hear the music. That means we're out of time. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're going to have more calls coming up so you don't have to worry about it. But coming up next, the mother of Sergeant Tamarisi. That will be Jill Tamarisa. Tamarisi. That is the mother of U.S. Marine jailed in Mexico. She's going to be up with us next. You're going to stay tuned for that. And we'll take more of your calls later in the second hour. Stay tuned for more Focal Point right after this.